Yes. What are you doing? Posing. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. I'll see you after your concert. Good luck. Everything. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a tutorial on this hair and makeup look. This was very very highly requested when I wore this look for a performance a couple of weeks ago and many of you really wanted to know how I did it. I'm hoping all the steps were the same. Today I have another concert, it's the last concert for the orchestra, the uni orchestra for the year and it's sort of our big concert so I am actually vlogging today as well so if you want to see a little bit more about like the behind the scenes on the concert day that vlog will be coming up this week. So if you want to see how I achieved this look then just keep watching. Right so I am under a bit of time constraint today so we're not going to chit chat too much just gonna get on to the basics of my makeup so I'm starting out with the Too Faced hangover primer this one is super moisturizing and I believe this works really well under the foundation I'm gonna to use today sometimes certain foundations are found to not work as well with this primer I'm not quite sure why because it is more just like a moisturizer but so the foundation I'm going to use today is actually one that a few of you have been requesting a review on. I think this video will probably be up before I can do any sort of review, um, so it might spoil some results, but I do really love it. It's the YSL All Hours Encre... I can't pronounce that. It's the YSL All Hours Foundation. I have the shade B10, which is the lightest shade. It's not ideal, it's not like the best pale shade ever, but it is pale enough for me to get away with and I can kind of blend it down my neck and add bronzer and we're good. I just wish it came in like B0 because that would be absolutely perfect. Um, but it is the most amazing formula, like I have really really fallen in love with the actual formula. It's, it just, it really does last all day on me and the coverage is great and it doesn't tend to break up or anything, it just, it looks amazing. As you can see though, it does start to oxidize pretty fast, so that's why the color isn't perfect for me. I can always mix it with a white mixer if I want to, um, but I'm just going to blend it a, a lot today. I love it with the Beauty Blender because it does help to keep it looking very skin-like. Um, it obviously looks a lot heavier when you use it with a brush. One layer will give you a pretty high medium coverage, but two layers will give you full. For concealer, I'm going to use my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Chantilly. I've really been enjoying this concealer again. It's actually been months since I've really picked it up because everyone's, you know, into their shape tape these days. And also for every day, I really enjoy using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer because it's really hydrating. But um, I picked this up the other day, I thought, oh, I should use this again because I haven't used it in a while. I sort of fell back in love with it. Now I'm also going to use this to kind of um, highlight the high points of my face because my face is feeling so tanned with this um, foundation. I don't really have any active breakouts at the moment, which is good. But I just have some scarring that I need to cover. I'm going to set where I put my concealer with the models prefer mineral veil which as you can see my container is completely broken but I'm trying to use the rest of it because it's amazing. I'm just going to use my beauty blender and kind of bake I guess which is not something I tend to do very often but um, I don't want this concealer to budge and I'm going to end up wearing this makeup probably for around 14 hours I imagine because it is as I say 8 in the morning and I don't think I'll be taking this off until 10 o'clock tonight. That's why I chose that foundation as well, because I know it is probably one of my most long-wearing formulas, even though, as I say, the colour isn't perfect. And by baking in my kind of concealer work, I will help to stop that budging as well. Now, to go all over my face, just to kind of set the makeup and give it a little bit of luminosity, I'm going to use the Hourglass Diffuse Light Powder and just an Eco Tools powder brush. I'm going to apply this quite liberally. This might also help to lighten my complexion a bit. <laughs> For contouring, I'm going to use my Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder and my NARS ITA brush. I suspect this video will go up before the vlog for today, um, so this makeup is for a concert that I have this evening, it's the last university orchestra concert for the year, so if you're interested in seeing like what I get up to on a concert day, um, and it's kind of a big 
a big the big concert of the year um, then you can check out my vlog that's going to come out on midweek next week for bronze I'm going to use the hourglass nude bronze light bronzer and my massive furless cosmetics brush I don't actually need much bronzer because my face is already so bronzed <laughs> so funny that will add more the thing is I'm basically applying stage makeup so it's allowed to look pretty heavy because from stage a lot of your um, features get washed out so I'm also wearing tonight quite a high necked um, black dress so it won't actually matter if my face and neck doesn't really match my chest or anything like it will be covered anyway for blush I'm going to use my NARS orgasm blush which I've been wearing in quite a few videos and you guys are always like oh which blush is that because it is just so beautiful it really does pop on pale skin and then for highlight today I'm actually going to use my little essence this is like my own custom highlighting and contouring palette that I made out of essence eyeshadows they have these really cute little like custom palettes that you can make um, and so I picked up the shades I think this one is Snowflake and Apricotta, which the tailor recommended as really good ones from the line for highlighting for pale skin. And this one used to be called Rosy Flamingo, but I think it's now called like Marshmallow or something. Um, and that's the one that I've always used as a highlighter. And then this is like a mauve color that you can use as a contouring shade. It's very cool toned, so it's going to look very shadow-like. Um, I should have used that today. Oh well. Um, but I'm going to use Apricotta to highlight, which is the most beautiful shade it's probably my favorite shade actually out of the lot because it's that very sort of soft um, peachy kind of highlight it really blends in with your skin tone nicely but still gives you a real pop because it is actually an eyeshadow not a highlighter typically I go for more sort of subtle highlights um, for day to day but when I want something really intense for stage I quite like using eyeshadow actually because it's much more pigmented so I like to apply it right up on my brow bone and like little circular motions and then bring it right down onto the cheekbone. Oh, look at that, it's so nice. So I just went and curled my hair to save a bit of time because Alex needed to have a shower. It was gonna be a bit too noisy while I was filming. I'm gonna do my brows. I'm using the Benefit Cabrow in shade two and I'm just going to spend quite a bit of time curating my brows. If you hear any random noises, it's just my husband getting his breakfast. Life has to happen. <laughs> What's that? And getting dressed. And getting dressed. He's currently naked. <laughs> it's a good view. I've got to worry that one of your viewers is going to be able to like... See the reflection or something? Yeah, CSI. <laughs> like zooms in on a screw or something. Yeah, like on a product and it's reflective and then they can see you walking around naked. Hopefully <laughs> Yeah. Not ideal, however, Alex lives here too. <laughs> Do I? He's off to work today. And he's doing the early shift so that he can come and watch me perform later on. Thanks, babe. And then I'm going to set them first with the 24 hour brow setter by Benefit. And I let this dry while I'm like doing my eyeshadow and stuff and then I can go in later with Gimme Brow. I really like this little combo because the brow setter actually like gels your brow hairs in place so they don't move. Um, but the Gimme Brow I find doesn't have as good of sort of hold but it's more about just adding plumpness to your brows so I like using both. So I add this first and this just doesn't add any colour or anything, it's completely clear. But it's just like hair gel but for your brows. Right, so moving on to the eyes, I'm going to start with an eyeshadow primer, and I've got this one by Essence. It's the I Love Color Intensifying Eyeshadow Base. I've only used it once, so I'm still yet to finalize my opinion. And I like to blend it out with a beauty blender, but it's a nice shade for me. It's actually not too dark. Sometimes tinted eyeshadow primers can look way too dark on my complexion, but this is a good shade. For today's eyeshadows, we're going to be using my Makeup Geek palette, and this is one that I custom put together. I'll have all the shades listed below. Um, I often can't remember what the shade names are, and they're not very easy to get out, but I do have them all written down, so I will put everything in the description if you're curious. I'm going to start out with this matte cream shade, just to set that 
eyeshadow base and pretty much just put this all over the eye area or maybe I should zoom you guys in then I'm gonna apply this color in the middle I know this is called latte it's a soft warm toned crease color and with my Mecca Cosmetica blending brush, I'm just going to start blending this into the crease just to create a transition. Now what I'm trying to do today is a recreation of a look I did a couple of weeks ago that you loved and you wanted me to make a tutorial for it. It was for a different concert and I didn't film it that day and I wish I had because it was such a nice look. So I'm hoping that I'm doing the same steps because I wasn't really concentrating when I was doing it, I just kind of <laughs> put my makeup on and then realized how awesome it looked and how much I wanted to film it. So hopefully it's the same. So then I'm going to go in with the color Bitten, which is this cranberry shade here, and a big fluffy brush. This one's by Hakuhodo. And we're going to start to blend this into the crease. Don't worry about getting this all over the lid because we're actually going to put this color on the lid as well. I just like to start with the crease. Um, I'm not sure why, I just do. <laughs> then I'm going to take a flat shader brush, this one's by Hourglass, and that same color Bitten, and I'm just going to start applying this to the lid. Use that fluffy brush to kind of blend that a little bit more. So now I'm going to take a tapered blending brush and the color Corrupt, which is a matte black shade. And now we're going to start bringing that depth into the outer part of the crease. I will also take a smaller brush and just kind of put this on the outer half of the lid as well. That'll just really add a lot of intensity. So we're just layering this straight over top of that cranberry color. Then you just want to go back in with Bitten, the cranberry color, and just sort of diffuse that a little bit. You can kind of go back and forth between Corrupt and Bitten, just um, depending on your, how much of the sort of cranberry color you want to actually see. Or if you want it more smoky and dark, you could apply more of Corrupt. Um, it's just about personal taste. And if you feel like you ever go a bit overboard, you can always take that original fluffy brush that had the light matte color on it and just kind of diffuse the edges. Then I'm going to take this Hourglass number 4 brush. It's like a very small sort of blending brush and go back in with that original sort of transition color latte. This is where I need my little mirror. <laughs> And we're going to apply this directly under the eye. Because we're going to do a lot of smoking out on the lower lash line. So we need a transition shade first. Once you've reached that step, you want to go in with a black pencil liner. I'm using the Zoeva Graphic Eyes in Black to Earth. It's just a really creamy formula. And what you want to do is put this straight onto the waterline and you could tight line with it as well don't poke yourself in the eye like I just did and then you want to take a pencil brush and just smudge out that lower waterline eyeliner a little bit and then I also like to take that eyeliner onto the outer third of the top lash line and just smoke that out with the pencil brush as well this will just add even more depth but you can't quite get the same level of depth with a shadow alone. Then I'm going to take that Hourglass number 4 brush again and Bitten to the cranberry colour. It's really important that you do all three steps. So you do the transition and then the black and then finish with a bit of the cranberry. Just going to add a little bit more of Bitten on the inner half of the lid as well. Because after all that blending I've kind of blended away quite a bit of that color so just beef up the intensity a bit then I'm going to take that shade that we used to highlight the essence apricotter and just my little fluffy brush that I use to set my base and we're just going to use this now to highlight add a little bit of brightness and you can also use a little bit of this under the brow bone if you feel like you've blended away some of that highlight we originally applied then I like to go in with that gimme brow on my brows that I was talking about earlier. So this is actually in shade one. 
Um, I used to use shade 3 and I actually think I prefer this lighter shade. I feel like the fibrous nature of this product works better on top of a brow gel that's already set because it kind of grips to it better. Then you want to add mascara. I'm using my Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara which is my favourite. This is really nice and volumizing. I only apply this mascara to my top lashes. Because on my bottom lashes, I like to use the skinny, small end of the IMAX Power Couple Mascara by Mecca Max. I don't like the other end, but I do really like this skinny end for my lower lashes. I find that this doesn't transfer to my, like, underneath my eye, which I really struggle with, with a lot of mascaras. Okay, so to save a bit of time, I'm going to do my lips before I do my lashes, so they've got a bit of time to dry. For the lipstick, I'm going to use my MAC Flesh Pot Lipstick, and then go on top with the Too Faced Lip Injection Glossy. So as I say, I went and curled my hair before. Now, I have a video on how to curl my hair. It's one of my most popular videos actually, but it's from ages ago. So don't laugh when you watch it, but I will link that up there if you're curious to know how I curl my hair with a straightener. I'm going to be wearing my Luxie hair extensions today. I'll put the exact color and link to these in the description. And if you are actually in Australia, um, Luxie hair now have an Australian warehouse, so you can get your orders really, really fast, which is awesome. Um, I custom dyed these, so I dyed the roots a bit darker to match my dark roots um, and I also toned them to be a little bit more cool tone because when they first come they're quite warm. So firstly I go right behind my ears and sort of separate off the top part of my hair. Then I give the roots a little tease so the hair extension is something to kind of grip to. Um, so I start out with a three clip piece first and, and then I just kind of wriggle and clip these into place. So for the back of my head, I basically do a three at the bottom, then of the big four, the smaller four, and then another three. And then I use two, two clips on the sides. I don't bother with any of the one clips because my hair is quite um, thin. So adding too much volume, it's almost just too heavy for my head. So for this part, I just separate off a section on the side, do the same process of teasing the roots. And then I stick that in, and then when the hair goes over it, sort of blends in nicely. Then, once all my extensions are in, I just tease the roots of my remaining hair at the top a little bit, and round the crown of my head. I also like to use a bit of the Batiste uh, volume spray. This isn't a dry shampoo, it's just a volumizing spray. And I quite like using that on the roots. It's quite sort of tacky and it helps to keep the volume. So now I'm going to add my false lashes. These are from Glam by Manicure. They're the Cara lashes, which are really nice and voluminous. So finally I'm going to go in with a setting spray. I'm using the Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day. This is the Rose Scent, so this is the collaboration with Nikki Joy, my good friend here on YouTube. So I'm going to spray a few coats of that. I really enjoy this spray and it really actually does make your makeup last a lot longer, which considering I need to have this makeup on for at least another 13 hours now, um, it's really important that I use it. So that is my finished hair and makeup look there. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, then don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up because it does really help me out here on YouTube. If you want to see my last video for pale skin, you can click up here. And if you want to go see my last vlog, we can learn a little bit more about me, then you can click up here. You can subscribe by clicking on my face down here. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.